Hi everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider. I've got another brand new live tutorial for you today. Uh, let's get, I mean, we may as well get excited about this one. Let's get started on it. I'm ready to go pretty quickly, uh, but I suppose I should tell you a little bit about it first. So it's inspired by the Alhambra. If you've never heard of that, it's a, uh, a, a palace in the southern parts of Spain in Andalusia. Uh, in a town called Granada, and it's sort of Moorish. So if you don't know what that means, it's like a um, more sort of Middle Eastern influence into southern Spain when they started conquering and bringing uh, everything, all of their culture up into the southern parts of Spain. They built all these palaces, and uh, this uh, is inspired by one of them. I'm going to be using Preciosa candy beads. I've got some Preciosa size 10 seed beads as well. Um, and then I've also got Preciosa candy rose beads. So if you don't know what those are, don't worry. I'm going to show you it all. I'm going to tell you everything. In the meantime, make sure if you haven't done so before, especially if you're new, hit that like button or subscribe, depending on whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, because we're live on both right now. Um, of course, also, we've got links in the description. If you want to see today's kit, you can go and get it. It's limited edition, so stock is very, very low. I think we've already sold more than half, and the show hasn't even started. So that's how limited it is. So if you want to go and get that, go check out that little link that's in the description. We also have a link to our Facebook group, uh, which is lots of good fun, and people post there all the time with all of their pictures and everything. So go check that out if you want to. Uh, we have lots of beading patterns, so there's a link to try out our beading patterns as well. So you can just get a five pound voucher to try out some of our beading patterns. Uh, but yeah, so let's 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 move on. Let's let's get into the fun, shall we? Um, I'll just say hello. Let's see where everybody is coming from. Uh, so. Uh, first cab off the rank, we had Kay, who said, Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Kay. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm glad you could be here. Uh, Wayne was also nice and early. He said, Good morning, Kay and all the early risers, because he's in the US where it's nice and early. I tell you, it would be a very leisurely morning if it was this time in the UK. It's 3 p.m. Uh, we've also got Nancy. We've got Ruti. Ah, lovely to see you, Ruti. I haven't seen you for a little while, so glad to see that you're here. Heather is here as well. Uh, we've got Jackie Alta. She says, hi, all my beading friends across the globe. Um, let's see, who else have we got? There's Tracy's here, Julie's here, Monica's here. Ah, good. Finally, the, uh, the Facebook comments are starting to come through. Jackie's here, Doris. Uh, Maxine is here as well. Hello, Maxine and Rocket, the cat. Um, but yeah, so let me just let me just show you a few things about this gorgeous design that we're going to be making today. So it's this one just here. Wait a second. There we go. Uh, it's this design just here. So I'll try and turn up the brightness a little so we can actually see the thing. Maybe down a little bit less than that. There we go. Uh, so these are the beads that you get just here. These are called candy beads. They're made by Preciosa. We don't need that ticker. Wait a second. Um, get out of here. There we go. So yeah, they're made by Preciosa, these little beads here. They're essentially two whole, uh, almost like cabochons. So they're flat on the back and then domed on the front. So you can see they've got all of them have this gorgeous either stenciling on them. So we've got uh, this one here, which is stenciled, this one here, which is stenciled. Uh, or we also have, which come in these two colors here, the gorgeous rose style as well. I just realized my face isn't up in the corner. Let's pop me in, shall we? Hi. Uh, so there you go. You can also see these ones are candy roses. So they've got these uh, gold gold fumed and embossed leaves, roses onto the top of each one. And then of course, the third color, which I think is quite possibly my favorite is this one here. Uh, again, it's called, it looks, it looks a little redder than in reality. Like I tell you, I wish my skin was as dark as this. I am a pale little fellow. But anyway, um, this one just here is gorgeous. But like I said, the stock on these is very, very low. So if you wanna go and get one, do it early, otherwise you might miss out. Um, 
so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. The whole process from beginning to end on how to make the entire thing. Uh, I will also just mention, if you missed it last week, we've got... Uh, this kit just here, the Illusion Bracelet, which, uh, and Ring Kit, I should say, Illusion Bracelet and Ring Kit. That's the video I did last Friday, so if you missed that one, go head over to the Bead Spider website and you can check that little video out where I made the bracelet. Um, essentially, if you want to get this one on discount, you still can, so you'll get the bracelet and the ring, and if you get all three kits, which we have three different colours here, uh, if you do that, you will also get our bonus pattern pack. So the kits come with these three patterns, the crosshatch, uh, actually it's slightly different from this one, and also the, the little flowers. You'll get these three patterns, but then the bonus pack when you get all three is another ten more. So yeah, that's uh, if you want to get that one, go have a little look on the website and go and get it, especially while you're shopping for your Alhambra kits. Um, but yeah, let's get on to the tutorial. First things first, while we have a little chat, um, tell me, everybody, which colour would you like to see me demonstrate? So I've got the blue, I've got the purple, and I've also got this one down here, which is Palace Gardens, which I really like. The Enchanted Knight. Don't vote for this one, though, because this one, I think, uh, has... Sorry, this one is the Hidden Treasure. Don't vote for this one, because the stock is already very, very low on this one, and we will run out, so let's not show this one. Vote from these two. Vote from the blue or the copper colour, because then uh, when the stream is over, hopefully there'll still be stock left and people won't go, oh, that one's gone. So vote, everybody. Do you want to see the Enchanted Knight, which is the blue with silver, and this one here? Or would you like to see the Palace Gardens, which is like this beautiful copper, rosy pink tone as well, and then that turquoise colour as well. So vote, 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 everybody. Uh, and let's let you guys choose which one I'm going to demonstrate with. Uh, in the meantime, let's see about some of these comments while people are voting. Uh, Jan Austin's here. She says, good afternoon, bead trotters. Uh, I, I, well, we'll hope that's uh, an assumption of globe trotters rather than uh, any form other, other form of trotters. Uh, Kay says, get out in the sun, Matthew. I, I agree. I, I definitely need to. I'd love a summer holiday. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I've, got, I've got too much dedication to the beads, so clearly I'm not going on holiday. Uh, Jackie says, these beads are very, very pretty. So vote everybody with which colour you'd like to see. Um, let's see. Lots of people greeting each other. Who's new, by the way? Who's never seen this before? Uh, make sure you give me a, uh, a Stacy. She says, demonstrate the palace garden. I just bought it. Uh, well, that's definitely a first quick cab off the rank. Uh, she's not mucking around. She's definitely making sure she's getting one. Uh, Martine also says palace garden, which is good. Monica says, I like them both. Tough to choose. Uh, she can't decide. But anyway, oh yeah. Uh, we're also, I should mention, we're running a little poll in our Facebook group. Uh, if you want to go and check that out, it's in our Facebook group. Um, we've got a little something coming soon, but it's all a bit under wraps. But this uh, poll that you can see in our Facebook group will uh, give you a hint as to, as to what is going to be coming soon in our Facebook group. We've got something fun planned indeed. Uh, so, yeah. I think we'll... We haven't had too many votes, have we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doris also says she wants the brown and copper. Jackie wants the copper colour. Everybody wants the copper. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Let's 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 demonstrate that one there. I saw we had a couple of people vote for the blue one, but unfortunately, it's not going to be the blue. We're going to go with the copper one, I think. That'll be nice. I like the copper one. It's my favourite as well, I think. So essentially, I've got all the bits we're going to need just here. Which, you'll be surprised, this little bead here is actually really, really pink. So, where is my last little bead hiding? There it is. So, I'll get them out and I'll show you. These are, essentially, this is what you'll get in your kit. So, you'll get your, as always, you'll get full instructions. I've already done the diagrams. It's already in waiting. Um, 
we've got full instructions you'll get your thread you'll get needle you'll get all the beads that you're going to need as well so like i said i'm going to be using two types of candy beads and then also my preciosa size 10 seed beads which all three kits have this gorgeous satiny surface uh, metallic satin surface bead uh, i've got my cup of tea it's in my way i tell you i'm trying to do things here but my tea's getting in the way let's put it on the other side shall we so yeah and then i'll show you what these beads actually look like um which i know you're probably very excited to see i know i am uh i really like these sorts of beads so uh oh yeah um jan in reference to the uh the poll that we're running in the the facebook group uh, that's her there saying it's going to be exciting. Do vote, everyone. We definitely have a clear winner, I think, on that on that poll thus far. But hey, you never know. Things might change. Um, so, okay. So I'll show you the beads. The first of which, like I said, they've all got this satin metallic bead. So this one here is the copper. It's a really, really beautiful satiny soft tone. Uh, but then it's still this same sort of metallic sheen about it. So almost like a polished metal. It looks really, really cool. Uh, all three kits have this one. So this one has the copper, the, the blue has a silver, and then the purple one has this sort of muted gold tone as well. So that's that's the gold one there. And then there's the satin of the, of the blue just here. So see what I mean? How it's sort of like metal, but then uh, matte sort of look about it. Then I've also got my candy beads, which the first of those is this turquoise color here. You can see they're all stenciled. Funnily enough, I don't know how they do it, but these are stenciled by hand, I believe. So they, as the beads come along, someone is there making sure and they go psh, 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 that each one, when they spray them, uh, gets just the perfect amount of spray on there. It's a dichroic coating, I believe. Um, ooh, uh... Uh, which um, makes it look really, really effective in terms of the stenciling. Uh, Kay asked the question, do candy beads have two holes? Yes, they do. So if I show you the end of a candy bead just here, there you go. There's the two holes. Turn it over, and there's your other two holes. So there you go. You can see if I get it just straight. There we go. You can even see straight through it. Uh, there we go. There we are both holes. So yeah, those are the stenciled candy beads. Um, hi to Linda, by the way, who's in Australia. It must be about midnight there, uh, I would think. So I'm very glad that you could join us, Linda, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. And Anita is here. She says, hi, sorry I'm late. Don't worry, you haven't missed any of the demonstrating. I love to waffle on a bit, but we're about to get there. We're going to demonstrate in just a second. Uh, so now I'll also show you the last little bead, which are the Candy Roses, which this one, it's a really gorgeous pink color. And I don't know if you can quite see it, but they're almost like iridescent. The light sort of passes into the rose beads, bounces around a bit in there, and they almost look like they're glowing from the inside, which gives a really cool effect on the finished design. I'll see if I can hold it up and see if you can see it. But the beads actually look a bit like they're almost glowing on the inside. It's super cool. I really like it. But anyway, they've got that gold leafing. I think it's sort of like a that sort of thing. And then they're embossed in the shape of, of a rose there. So that's what these little fellas are. Again, they're two hole as well. Uh, so that's everything we're going to need. Let's get started, shall we? It's a nice easy little design. I'm going to show you, there's a couple of ways that you could actually make this, but by doing the experimenting process, there's one that I found was a much, much easier way and much quicker too, to actually get your bracelet coming together. So, um, yeah, wait till you see it. I think it's good fun. Uh, it definitely makes the design a little bit more interesting, I think. So anyway, I've got some of my beads i'll pop a few just on my mat here and have i got yes i do one sec just give myself a little bead mat bit on my left so that i can access my seed beads i will try and remember to flick between left hand and right hand for you guys because i know i'm a lefty uh, and a lot of you prefer seeing it on the right hand so i'll just try and ooh, don't want to 
have that happen. There we go. Uh, I'll just try and flick between the two while I'm demonstrating so that you get the gist, but it's a really easy little design. So don't be too worried about it. It's nice, easy little design. So yeah, shall we begin? Uh, grab a few more roses over. And essentially, I'm going to be using, because I've got the copper one, I'll use myself some lovely copper color brown thread. This is the thread that you'll get in the kit. You will also get, of course, the um, a beading needle included with your kit. So cut yourself off. You can probably do it with about two meters, but get a little bit extra just to be on the safe side. Uh, it definitely makes life easier when you've got a little bit more compared to when you have a little bit less. So anyway, just thread one needle onto one end, that's all we need to do, like so. And now I'm ready to begin, more or less. So to start with, I only need to make a little circle of beads. So essentially, I'm going to create the base, which is just going to be these two beads just here, and that's going to be my starting point. See how you can see through that bead even? Ah, uh, there you go, you can see it's like now that I've got it lifted up, you can see the light passing straight through. It looks really good. It's a nice bead. So anyway, um, and then here's the, the blue one, which has this gorgeous iridescence on the top there. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I need one of these, one of my opposite color, because I'm going to try and do a checkerboard, and then I just need a couple of my seed beads. I only need two of them for this starting point. But it's always important to try and make sure that the upward face is always, you know, facing upwards, so that we don't have some facing down and so forth. We want them all to be facing up towards us, so that when we wear it, you'll see the stenciling, you'll see the roses, and they won't be upside down or anything. So to begin with, we'll pick up we're going to work, so the holes of my uh, piece, they go this way, like this. So I'm going to pick up and make a little circle in this little gap here. So the way I'll do that, first things first, I'll pick up a seed bead. I'll go through one side of a candy. Pick up another seed bead just here. Wait a second, there we are. Pick up a second seed bead. And now I'm going to go down the opposite side. So you know how I said I wanted it to be a circle? If you look at it like this, I've gone up one thread this way, and the other one's going to go down that way. And then that way, I can be sure that I'm going to create a little circular shape. I'm going to pull it all the way through, almost. Obviously, I'll leave myself a tail, which I can work with a bit later on. Tail doesn't need to be too long or anything like that. So there we go, we'll start like this, and now if I thread through those beads, all of them again, you'll see I'll make myself a nice little circle. The circle doesn't need to be too tight or anything, so just pull it all the way through, like so. Pull, 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 pull. And once I get it around about here, I can just tie these two threads together and it will bring it into a nice little circle. So I'll just tie them one to the other. I should do this the other way around so that it's a bit easier for me. It doesn't matter. So I'll just pull that, pull that, pull that. And as I pull this, it should hopefully, there we go, get that nice and firm. Now, when you do this, Try not to pull it too tight. You don't want it to be so tight that they're sort of bunching together. So a loose-ish knot is better than a super-duper tight one. It will obviously be more secure the tighter you make it, but we don't want it to be too tight. So just do several knots and do them just that little bit looser just to be on the safe side. You can do some surgeon's knots if you want to as well. So I'm just going to tie it a couple more times just to get it extra secure. There we go, and one last one. Actually, that'll probably do, but I'll do one more anyway, just to be on the safe side. There we go. Tighten that all up. There we are. So yeah, I've done four little knots. I've got it relatively tight, but not too tight. So we don't want it to come undone, but we also don't want it to be pulling it too tight at this very, very end just here. So there we go. We've got our little piece like this ready to go, and I'm ready to begin the actual design. So I will just take my needle away from this little piece here. So I'll just go, actually I'll, yeah, all right, whatever. I'll go through this, and now 
into my candy bead. I'll just go round once more. And essentially, I want to weave around until I'm coming out from the very edge. So if I just go down this end here, pull that through there, and now I'm coming out, see, you can see just here, I'm coming out from the edge of one of these four holes. So there's a hole going this way, a second hole here, a third hole there, and a fourth hole there. See, that makes sense. Uh, hopefully, then, you can sort of see that, and that will bring you into that first little circle. So this is just our base structure. Now, this is where things get surprisingly really easy. So what I'm going to do just now is essentially I'm going to, starting from here, I'm going to just work up the edge going one seed bead, one rose, one seed bead, one stencil candy, one seed bead, one rose, one seed bead, one candy, one seed bead, one rose, one seed bead, one candy, all the way like that, all the way down the length of your bracelet. So whatever size it is you want to do, um, if you do about 20 or so, it'll give you about an eight and a half to nine inch bracelet. So it gives you a really, really long bracelet because as you can see just here, the actual clasp section, uh, it's much easier to figure out exactly the size that you want it to be by changing the size of the clasp. So I'll talk to you about that a little bit later, but essentially I'm going to go down this one side. So a seed bead, so there we go, one seed bead, and at this we want to be very careful that they're always facing upwards, so I want to make sure I'm going on the outermost side of the bead, so through this little bead here that just, just check the holes of course, make sure that they're nice and clear, and then I want to go through that outer edge, see that, still on the right side, so that when I go all the way through it, I'll thread it down, and it's going to sit See, face up like this. Then I'll pick up one seed bead and another of my little crystals here. Uh, sorry, little um, candies. Again, I want to go through the right side. Whoops, got my thread cord on my bead mat just there. Let me just organize my bead a little neater. Just give me two seconds. There we go, that's better. Now I shouldn't be knocking it anymore, hopefully. There we are. So yeah, and I'll just sort of continue along in this process for the length of your bracelet, 20, 19, 18, whatever it is you want to do. Take into account that the clasp itself is about an inch or two, but the nice thing is you can test it when you get towards the end. So I'll do a few more just so I can do the whole thing. Again, like I said, make sure you don't do, see this how it's on the left side? Make sure you're always going on the right side, the outer side, so that as we add extra beads on, they're always going to stay upright. Keep that tail thread out the way. Doesn't matter if it gets a little loose, it's nice and easy. You can just thread them on. I mean, you don't even have to lay them into position. I'm just doing that so that you can see what I'm doing. So uh, here we go, let's pick up another one, another seed bead, followed by another little turquoise. So I'll thread through the right hand side there. Then I'll pick up a seed bead and one of my roses and go through the right side there and then pick up a seed bead and I'll go through the right side of this next bead and then a seed bead and now through a rose again and I'll just do a few more just so that you really so that we've got enough to demonstrate. Like I said, don't forget to check the holes as well. It's important with these ones, because they are uh, gold leafed at the end, uh, the little holes can get a bit of gunk in them. But if you stab the needle in through both sides, if you go through this way and then take it through the other side and get it out, if there's anything blocking, you'll clean it out because it's just at the little hole. It doesn't go all the way through most of the time. But as always, it's good to check both sides as you go so that you don't end up halfway through your bracelet and then going, oh no, one of these beads only has one hole. It's, um, you know, they, they can come uh, with little manufacturing defects, so you just gotta be aware of that, uh, as with all beads, really. So yeah, there we go. Uh, I'll go through this one here, and then 
I'll add just a couple more and that'll do us. One last one. There we go. So I'm going to finish with my rose. So there we go. One seed bead and through that right side, slide it all the way down. And you can see this is a good point to check that they are all aligned in the right direction. So see that? There we are. They're all nicely aligned. They're all face up. That's what we want. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do essentially is turn back around. We're not going to add any beads on here. We're going to cover this at the end. So we'll just have a tiny bit of thread from one side to the other. And then we're going to work all the way back down, adding seed beads into these little gaps. So like I said, it's a good point once you've done this to check the length of your bracelet. Again, don't worry if this comes a little loose, like this top bead or anything. You can tighten the whole thing at the very, very end. It's really easy to get it nice and firm. So like I said, I'm going to come back down the opposite side. So where's the little hole there? There we go. So now I'm going to just come back down here. I'll pull my thread through and I'll grab a seed bead. So there we go, our next single little seed bead and flip this fella back over. I'm gonna go through his second hole as well. If I can see it, there we go, so through there. Obviously this is easier if you do it away from yourself rather than working towards yourself like I'm doing. But you know, we know that I love to make things a little more difficult for myself as I always do. So I will turn it around just to make life easier for me. And then hopefully visually it will be easier for you too. So don't worry if it's loose, it's not a problem in the slightest. The way that this works, we can do our tension right at the end. So there we go, I'm through here. Let's pick up a seed bead and pass into this one. Pick up a seed bead. I mean, you don't even have to pull it all the way through if you don't want to. You can do it towards the end. It's nice and simple. Through there. And through here. And then a seed bead. And through here. Pick up another seed bead. and pass through the next. So this one, like I said, it is the easier method. It can get a little bit messy because of this process of going up then down. So maybe two needles is actually a great method for this, who knows? But anyway, uh, so there are other ways of doing this, but I find that doing this way, it's way quicker. So even though it's a little bit unwieldy at the beginning, once you get going, it's definitely going to save you a lot of time. I was doing it with a slightly different method where I was doing the whole process in one go and then was like, do you know what? This is so painfully slow. And I was looking at it and I just went, do you know what? Why don't I do it all the way down one side, all the way up the other side, and then I'll just do my little crosses in the center. And do you know what? In the time it took me to make one little section about an inch long, I'd managed to do the whole thing of a different colorway. So I was just like, can you believe it? So anyway, this way, it does look a little more fiddly, but especially if you're not trying to demonstrate to someone, it's not nearly as bad as it looks. It's really easy. And you'll see even sooner that it's a great way of getting your tension nice and firm too. So I'll just add on that last little seed bead and pass down, remember, here's my base structure. So I was on the outside edge. Let's go down into this one here and pull that all the way through. There we go. And now see that? It's gonna just pull itself nice and tight for me as I give that a yank. You'll see, might twist a little, it's no problem. You can see it's a little bit loose. So let's just give it a little tug and then if you just give this last bead a little pull, see how that thread was poking out? You give that last little bead a pull, hold on it. You can sort of use your finger to hold this bead and then pull and it will get everything lovely and firm. Look at that, not a single gap. Easy, really good. So now we wanna do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'll go through this little seed bead at the base and we're gonna come up so that we're in the center just here as well. So we'll go through this bead here, 
we'll get ourselves into position to add the next row of beads. So this will allow me to get it nice and tight and I'll have something I can hold on to. There we go, through there, pull that all the way nice and tight, get your tail thread out of the way. There we are. And now this, you can tie a knot here if you want to, just to try and keep this uh, this edge here nice and firm, but it's not important. You don't have to. Uh, again, you'll see the whole thing, you can sort of do its tension towards the end. So now we want to make sure we do the opposite. So I'm going to start now with how many beads do I need? I need one, two, three, four of the green. I need one, two, three, four, wait. Uh, so I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five green, and one, two, three, four of my other color now that I'm swapping them over. So four of these and five of my green, so here they all are. There's that turquoise, here are my roses, and here are a few seed beads. And essentially, I'll just continue now in the exact same way, but this time I'm gonna make sure again that I'm going through the right side of the bead. So let's just thread them on. So first thing I wanna do is make sure I pick up my seed bead. Always pick up a seed bead, don't forget your seed bead. Pick up your seed bead and then in this instance, we go through one side of our little piece there, pick up a seed bead, and then do our rows again through that same right side of the bead. See that? Don't forget to check both sides of the holes. There we go, through there, pick up a seed bead. Now it's one of these ones. And see that? That's the left side. We don't want to go through the left. We want to make sure we're always going through that same side. And a seed bead again. And a rose. Through the right side. Check both holes. There we are. Through there. One seed bead. One of my turquoise stenciled beads. Where's that right side hole? There it is. Seed bead and a rose. Seed bead and a turquoise. We're nearly there. Try not to pinch yourself with the needle like I just did. Stab myself right in the thumb. There we go. And now, again, don't forget, check those holes. This one just had a tiny bit in there, but you can see it's just like a, a very small leafing. So it's just on the outer edge. It's not plugging the hole or anything. It's just like a, a very fine layer of, of gold sort of protecting the entrance to the hole that just needs to be removed. So there we go, through there. And now last bead through that right side pull that all the way down, and we're going to just check that they are all sitting around the right way because this is the time to notice that. There we go. Make sure I haven't missed any seed beads. Everything looks just right to me. There we go. And you can see it's the same length, and I've got now that sort of crossing section happening. Um, now, I think it's time for a sip of quick tea, and then I'll get back into it and I'll do this outer edge. Lovely big gulp just there, before it gets cold. So there we go. Now, <clears throat> here we go. I'm going to just turn around now and go back from whence I came and just add seed beads in the gaps. So if you want to do it in your hands, you can like this. Just one by one. Oop, try not to get caught on the edge of your bead mat. And then the next one. We're going to just go all the way down. Come on, Mr. Tail Thread, don't do this to me now. Hold on here. Don't worry about it being a bit loose or anything. We'll sort that like we did the other side. In fact, we can sort both sides simultaneously when we get to the very end if we feel we need to, but I reckon my other side's probably pretty secure. Down there. And then the next one. So you see, it comes together pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. Where's my next few? There we go. I've only got a few more. 
through that edge. And then the next couple more. Do you know, as well, it's a fun idea. I was thinking you could always do this as just a single bracelet if you wanted to. Instead of adding your second row, you could have just done the whole thing with just one row and sort of do it like that. That could also be a really cool looking effect, just as an idea. Uh, so yeah, there we go. And now finally, I need to just come down into this last little one, back into my base structure. Here we go, keep that tail out of the way. And then down into the final little hole, just there. And now, if I just lay them side by side, you'll see this one's still pretty firm. Look at that, it didn't come apart at all really, almost. Ah, a tiny bit of looseness, not much. And now I can just pull on this, and you'll see that will, if I hold this last little end bead, that will tighten my previous row back up again. And now I can just pull on this thread, and then ta-da, there you go, you can see it's already looking nice. It's looking good, isn't it? That's coming together. Um, ah, Rhonda, she's joined us and she says, hi, Matthew and everyone. Nice to comment from the for the first time. Rhonda has been a an avid watcher. She watches every week. She tells us and she orders really often. Uh, and um, she said, I haven't been able to figure out how I can comment. So I'm really glad to see you've worked it out and you're on here and you're commenting. So thank you for joining us, Rhonda. And then also uh, my cousin who calls me Moo, Matty Moo. Uh, he's on as well. So hi to Shane. Um, how's how's things in Australia? Uh, are you in lockdown? I don't even know how it's going down there anymore. Um, so, right. Now, let's continue on. Uh, I'll have to talk to you later, Shane. I'm busy. I've got my adoring fans watching. No, just kidding. Uh, so yeah, let's now get on with the next part of our design, which is stitching these two pieces together. Again, it's a really, really easy process and super effective, super quick, nice and easy to do. So anyway, I'll just hold this nice and tight. So I've got my thread, I've got both ends nice and firm now, they're pulled tight. So I'll pass along the outer edge here, up into here, up into the first seed bead, up and exit from the second most little, uh, little candy bead there. See that? So now I've gone from this end, up that hole, all the way through, through the seed bead and out of the candy. So we'll just push our needle through there, pull it all the way tight, get it sure it's firm. And now what we're going to do to create our little cross, we don't actually have to go through our seed beads. So what I'll do, hold that tight, like so. I'm coming out of just here. I'm not coming out of this seed bead. I'm exiting before that seed bead. Don't go through the seed bead. Pick up one little seed bead like this, and we're going to pass down just through this candy bead, only through the candy, not through any seed beads. Pull it all the way through. Pull, 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 pull. Try not to get your threads caught in any way. And then there you go. See that? That creates the bottom little one of this loop just here. So if I just give that a little tug extra. Now I'm back down here at the bottom and see how I've got one, two, three little uh, beads there sticking out. Get my tail out the way. See how I've got three little beads just here? Right, uh, right on my doorstep? No. Uh, right here at the bottom. I want to add my fourth bead into the center. So I'll pick up one seed bead. And I'm going to go back up just not through any seed beads, just up through the whole of the candy bead only. See that? Through the candy, not through any seed beads. Through, uh, so through that candy. There we go. And that, and as, as I pull that, you'll see it adds the top one here and the bottom one here. So now I'm going to continue upwards and just repeat that process. So through this seed bead, through that next candy, pull that all the way through. Once you've got it, there we go. I've got a bit more to hold on to now. So you can see it's time to add the bottom of this gap and the top of this one. So I'll pick up one seed bead, which is just here. I'll go from this one here down into the hole beside, avoiding all the seed beads. Put all the way in. Don't let your thread get caught around your 
little end pieces, pull it tight, and there you go. You can see now it's going to create the join between there. I'll pick up my next little seed bead, and again, let's go up just into the seed, uh, just into, don't, don't touch any of these seed beads, into the candy, and then we're going to thread ourselves up through the seed bead and the following candy. I'll do it in one go if I can. There we are. I'll do it in two. So through there, pull that all the way tight, give it a nice yank so that it's firm, and then I'll go up and into the candy, and now I'm in position to do the next iteration. So again, we pick up one bead, which is going to join the two at the top. Go down into that little candy bead, just there. All the way down. What are we thinking of the design, by the way? Do we like this, uh, the colour? Uh, Rhonda says, I love the colours uh, and pattern of this bracelet. bracelet. Uh, well, there we go. So I'll just pop that one up just there. So you can see I'm coming out of this bead. We want to do our bottom, the, the top of this little section here. So we go through here, through our seed bead, up into the next candy bead, like there. Give it a nice tug to get it super firm. And we'll just repeat it again. So it doesn't take long either, does it? And this is just stitching them together one by one with little right angle weaves, technically. So you pull that all the way through, take our seed bead, go up through here, into the next seed bead, and the next candy. Don't go through that next seed bead, just slide that through all the way. Pull, there we go. And do the same again. So I'll pick up one more down here, through, pull it all the way through, don't get your threads caught, keep it on the top, pull that through, and now let's grab another seed bead, and up, there we go. So yeah, which is everybody's favourite colour of the three? Just while I do this, vote everyone. Tell me, which one do you like best? You can even vote for the purple one now, assuming there's any left in stock. Which colour do we like best? So we've got the Hidden Treasure, we've got the Palace Gardens, and we've got the Enchanted Knight. So all based around our Alumbra theme, uh, which is that uh, Moorish palace in uh, southern Spain, in Andalusia that this is inspired by. So I'll just continue along, and you guys can comment in. Tell me which colours do you like best? What colour combinations would you do? Uh, I want to know um, all of those sorts of things. What colour would you like to see? Um, yeah, Heather, she says, I think this would make a good two-needle project. Yes, of course, it is. Uh, again, another easy project for doing with two needles if you want to. Uh, Bernadette says, I love the colours and the design. Um, what else do you reckon you could use this for? Do you know what? <clears throat> you could very easily do this as a triple width too. If you want something a little bit wider, you could always do it as a, a triple width, which I think could also look really cool. You would just have to make your base structure uh, three beads. So one, two, three beads, and then maybe join them after you do the first pair so that you've got something a bit more solid to grab onto and then just sort of work sideways. Or even you could make a, a little 3x3 three three design as an earring, for example, if you wanted to, uh, which could look really cool. Um, there's, I was, I was playing with the design yesterday uh, to sort of see what I could come up with, and I came up with some interesting sort of ideas, but I thought this one was the best, so we, we had to turn it into a, ki a kit. I had no choice. So there we go. Go through there, and it's not going to take me much longer now. Just a couple more little iterations to do. And it'll be all joined, you'll see. It's going to have that lovely little, what looks like a right angle weave in the corner. Uh, Linda says, Enchanted Knight. I just bought it. So uh, she made sure she got hers nice and quick um, because there's probably fairly low stock. I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting almost out of stock of the purple one by now. It's probably only got a couple left. Less than five, I would think. You never know. Uh, what happened to my thread? Oh, it's the tail. <laughs> it 
Is it the tail thread? Where am I? Yeah, there we go. Just pull that up. There we go. A uh, few more. Um, ooh, pop that away. Here we go. If you added more rows, you could make napkin rings as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and then Monica says, it's very hard to say. I love them both. Well, there's three. There's actually three, unless there's only two left on the website. I don't know. I should check that. Uh, we'll have a look at the website later to see if it's still there. But like I said, once this one, it's a limited edition kit. So once they're gone, uh, potentially it'll be a little difficult. We'll have to, we won't be able to do them again for at least a while because we have to get the beads to come back in from Preciosa, which takes, you know, quite a few weeks. So we're not able to do it for at least the next six weeks or more. So it probably won't be around until Christmas time, this one. So hence, it's limited until from between now and then. Uh, here we go. Penny says, I'd put the purple, surprise, surprise, with the turquoise candies. Yeah, that could also be a really nice idea. That would look lovely. What color, what color seed bead would you use, Penny? Um, let's see. A lot of people are liking uh, Jan's idea of doing it for a napkin ring. That's a good idea. Uh, Stacy says cranberry and gold could be really nice. Um... But yeah, let's let's see where we end up with. Uh, so here we go through here and through the final one now. And we're going to just do our last little iteration to finally join the two ends together. So you can see I'm almost there. It's almost all done. Almost. Now I just got to go through this last little one here. And of course, I've just looped through my thing. Just go through here. There we go. There we are. And now I'm in position. I can just add in the last little join, which is one seed bead at the top. Nearly lost my thread. One seed bead at the top just here. And one more seed bead at the bottom to get us finished. So up through here, through there, pull that tight. And there you go, you can see we've got our central structure ready and happening now. So that's looking really good. I'm really happy with that so far. But now we're gonna take it to the next level. We're gonna make it even better. And then uh, at the end, I'll show you how to add on a little clasp as well. Um, it won't be the right color clasp, but that doesn't matter. Uh, so I will just show you now how we embellish the outside. If you like it like this, keep it like this. No problem. You could do that if you wanted to. It would look really, really good. Um, Rhonda's not mucking around. She says, I just purchased all three kits. Uh, I'm glad to see that you haven't missed out on that one. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's now continue on and I'll show you how we do this uh, outer edging. So I'm coming out of the top here. I want to be coming out of one of the corners. So either this corner here or this corner here. It's going to be easiest to follow along. Starting from here, I'll go through this seed bead because one, it firms it up a little bit more. We'll go through there. I'll go down this little candy bead. Again, it's going to just firm that up. Pull that tight. And now without going through any of the seed beads, I'm going to just jump across and go from one side all the way into the other. The good thing about this design is when they sit sideways like this, you can't see them. You'd have to bend it like that, and then there's only this tiny little bit of thread that you'd never see. So there we go. There's that. And now we're in position to start adding our little embellishment. So this is how I like to start it. If you run out of thread, you can bring in a new thread and do it easier. But I'm going to do it like this so that, oh yeah, K says, don't forget to like and share, everyone. I agree. Like, share, do the same on Facebook. I see um, K is over on YouTube. But yeah, do the same on Facebook. Share it, like it, subscribe to our channel, of course. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter if you want to know when these videos are coming more. Uh, so yeah, now I'll show you how we're going to add our embellishment. So this bit, the corners are probably the most difficult part of the whole design just because you've got to go, how would I do that? So anyway, I'll pick up five beads here. We always pick up five while we're embellishing. Every time we're picking up seed beads, it's always going to be five. So one, two, three, four, five seed beads. 
And what I'm going to do is loop around and I'm going to go back up into this candy. So I'm going to skip this bead just here. I'll just go straight up into the end of that candy. And these little beads, hopefully, are going to just come over to this side here and they're going to sit around my candy like that. See that? No problem. So I'll just rotate it round so it's a little bit easier for me to work with. And now I'm going to go one, two, three, four, through those same five beads, through the fifth one, and then now I'll go through this extra bead. The reason that we did this is to anchor this onto this little end bead so that it doesn't flop around, we don't lose it, anything like that. It stays nice and firm when it's on the edge there. So see that, that'll because it's nice and taut, it'll stay close to that edge rather than flopping off the side. Um, so let's now continue upwards, one, oop, where are we, one, two, three, four, five, there we are. And now we're going to go from here straight across into the next little group of five just there. So all the way through, push that through. And like I said, we're picking up five every time. Try not to do six or anything like that. Just five. Let's bring this a little bit closer so it's easier for me to work with. One, two, three, four, five little beads. And we're going to run up the edge here. Then we'll do our next one. So one, two, three, four, five. Up there. One, two, three, four, five. What do we think of this? Um, this little edging do we think it adds to it do you prefer it do you prefer it with just this as a little bit finer or do you think that the edging really adds an extra something to it tell me what you think uh, so anyway we'll keep going one two three four five I'll only do a couple more just to give you the the gist and then I'm gonna move on ahead on to adding the clasp I'll add it on to the the larger piece to make it the actual finished thing so three four, five again. Uh, Marissa says, hi everyone, it's nice to be here. Um, welcome, welcome Marissa, I'm glad you could join us. Um, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're enjoying the show. And Jan says, gosh Matt, those beads are well trained. Well, I tell you, I have to, I have to, uh, I have to do a lot of training of those beads. I have to, you know, I give them occasional treats, snacks, you know, well done. Much like how I train my cat, you know. Good job, Rocket. You can you can have a snack. You haven't bitten me yet today. Actually, he probably has, but but <clears throat> I have to do the same thing with the beads. Practice, 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 as they say. There was a uh, my sister had a violin school that she went to. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It was like no, I can't remember the name. Doctor Suzuki. I don't know. I can't remember. But anyway. Um, his motto, and they would even play it to a tune, was practice and practice until you go crazy. And like, that was essentially something that was the ethos. And when it comes to beating, the same applies. If you practice and practice and practice until you go crazy, you'll be, you'll be pretty pro at uh, getting those beads under control and having them behave what you want them to do. So now that I'm at the end, uh, I'll show you how to do this corner, I'll show you how to do that corner, and then I'll just move on because essentially it's just adding the beads down the edge again. So what we'll do, we're going to go through here, down that first hole, see that? And we're going to loop it on because if we just went straight into here, it would be a bit floppy around the corner. So we're going to go down here and now missing this little seed bead here because it's out of the way, we're going to just pass through the five beads that we just added, one, two, three, four, Pull that tight and then through that fifth little bead there. 
and as we pull that tight you can see it sits nicely on the edge and it's not going to flop around or anything and I can pick up my next five beads one two three four five beads through there five more beads and then we're going to do the same process again so because we can't really attach to anything here we're going to have to attach these five so one two three four five it's nice and easy that you never have to remember how many beads it's always five so again through the far corner but this time i'm going to weave back towards these five beads here so from here up into this little bead here see that so bring myself back to where i started this corner part and pull it tight and i'm going to go through all five of these beads here one two three four five it might look a little bit loose to begin with but as soon as we add our next five beads it's going to just pull that nice and tight so see how it's a little bit like sticky outy there when you pull it it's going to want to go with it so let's go our next five beads and then you get the gist three four five there we are and we go down this next bead here and we just continue down the edge now and you can see it keeps those beads that's nice and firm sitting on there really nicely uh, and they're going to stay on the edge so it looks really good and i'll do my next little five and then we'll move on, shall we? One, two, three, four, five. What comments have we got from people? Uh, here we go. Purple Penny has said, I'm, I've been crazy for a long time. So clearly she's been doing lots of beading practice. <laughs> uh, that is uh, Purple Penny just there. Um, yes. Dr. Dr. Suzuki is a violin school. So I did remember that since my sister was that, was... that was before I was even born. Um, but yeah, so there we go. If I just continue now, more or less, in this process up the edge, and I do the same when I get to these corners, you end up with... This. So essentially, this is your final little piece. There, there's the end. There is the entirety of your beautiful bracelet right there like that and essentially what we're going to do the next step which i'll just jump ahead as well because um it will just be a little bit quicker in terms of demonstrating so what we would do at this point now is more or less you can either bring in a new thread or if you've still got more thread uh you can do that there but essentially if you have a look at where this central one is here i'll use my needle to show you uh, i don't need it on this thread anymore if we have a look at where I've got this bead, so from this bead here, one, two, three, the fourth bead. We want to join to add a loop from the fourth bead back. So this is the center where they're joined. One, two, three, and the fourth. And then we're going to join it to one, two, three, and the fourth. So when you join those like that, you add a little loop section that we can use to attach our clasp. So showing you on the... Well, I'll have to do it on the silver one, actually. I, I may as well. Okay. So anyway, so you can see this is essentially what we're adding, this little toggle piece just here, and we created this little loop. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to show it to you. I just realized I haven't got it ready. I thought I had it ready on my little piece here, but I don't. So I'll show it to you really quickly. I'll give myself a little bit of thread. I'll bring myself a piece in just so I can show you it on this little design. Oops. And I'll add that little loop in. Where's my needle gone? Here we are. So we're getting through this pretty quickly, aren't we? So just thread my little thread on there. You can see that we use, in this one, the satin gold beads just there. And now I'll just add, pop a few of these little gold beads down for me to use. So like I said, we're going to now create a loop that joins from here to here. So I'll just bring my thread in. You can bring it in anywhere. So I'll just start weaving down this edge. Somewhere around here we'll do just a couple of beads. Leave a nice little tail because I can just cut that off a bit later. Tie a knot just, just there. So there's this little loop. 
going through this second bead. So we'll pass through the loop, and that's going to tie a little knot just on there. Yoink. Get that nice and firm. Pass through a couple more beads. And I'll tie my next knot. Just here. Get that firm too. And then up through here, up through here. I'll do one extra knot just to be on the safe side. And then I'm going to bring myself into position so that I can add that little loop in. So through there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, whatever. This will do. Oops, got a bit caught there on my tail. Pull that there. Tie a knot. And now I could cut this little bit of excess tail off too because I don't need that anymore. I've tied enough knots that it's going to be secure. Through there. Just keep it in the nice same little gap. Pull. There we are. And now, like I said, we want to go one, two, three from the fourth one. So through there and exiting from this one just here. Pull that all the way through. And now I'll go with my seed beads. Put them over here, actually. One, two. Like I said, we're picking up nine seed beads. So three, four, four. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine little seed beads just there. So there's my nine seed beads. Get this out of the way. Come on, Mr. Thread, get out of the way. There we are. So there's my nine seed beads. I'm exiting from this one just here, which is one, two, three, and then there's the join. One, two, three, and into the fourth one on this side. And then as I pull that all the way through, there you go. You can see that creates this little loop at the top, which you can do it longer if you want to. Uh, it's definitely nice and easy to reinforce it. You can make it as long as you want. It's a good place to extend your bracelet if you want it a little bit longer. So add a couple of extra, 9, 10, 12, however many you want. If you want to secure it again, which is important, uh, head on down through your little piece just here. Get it on secure. Let's just weave on back up through this side. Get this into here. So I'm going to just bring myself into position so that I can make it nice and secure again. So down there. Up that side again. And if we have a look at where it's meant to be attached, it is this bead here. Yep, there we go. Through there. And now across my loop again. That'll make that extra secure. Doubled its strength now. Doing my concentration tongue. Pull that all the way through. There we go. And now essentially all you would do is just take your thread all the way down this same edge and you would repeat the process at the other end. I'm not going to waste my time, sh waste your time showing you that. I'm going to jump ahead now and show you how you would attach your clasp. So uh, I don't need this little excess bit of tail anymore. I tied lots of knots, so I'm pretty confident that it's secure. And now with this bit nice and firm, I'll ignore this thread now. And I'm going to start attaching my little toggle pieces. So what we've got here, for example, is one side of the toggle. These, uh, This little toggle, the instructions are included uh, in with your kit. So if you're getting the kit, uh, you will be able to get the, uh, the instructions for the little toggle clasp, which this is one part. And then here is the second part, which I'll just show you with the bar piece. So there's the bar. Uh, that we're going to make with our seed beads, and then I'm going to attach this fella to this little bar. So essentially, I need to just make sure I'm in the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 
speeds. So I'm not quite in the right spot. Let's just weave myself around a teeny bit around to be in the right spot. There we go. So we're going to, because we're adding a Pyote strip to, to thread, to attach this to our actual piece just here, you want to make sure that you're coming in because it's 14 beads wide, so that you will add a bead. One, two, three, four, five, six is where I want to be. So these are the two central rows here. So I need to go one further out, actually. So that you're coming in just before the seventh bead. So let's just go across this way. Here we are. So there you go. You can see now, wait. Once I just get myself in position, this is where you want your thread to be once you've finished this little claspy bit. Don't get caught there, Mr. Thread. There we are. So that you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven and eight are where my, oh, sorry. I just realized I'm not in shot there. Whoops. Uh, so yeah, if I show you that again, uh, if we have a look, it's 14 beads long. So I want one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm exiting from the sixth. I'm going to add my peyote strip to row seven and row eight. So then I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six rows after that. So it's a really easy process to do this peyote strip. So if I pick up one seed bead, I'll go from this bead here and just working in peyote, I'll go to this outside edge just there. I'll pull that nice and tight. So this is going to be in line now with that bead in row seven. Now I'll take another seed bead and I'm going to loop back around and into this bead. So this bead will sit beside it on top of this one just here. So if I come back around, we'll go into there. There's a second bead. Pick up another. And we're going to just weave back and forth into the bead that we've just added. We want to try and keep our tension quite firm if we can. So there we go. I'll pick up my fourth bead. I should have had a bit more thread than this. Unfortunately, I didn't. Through there. So now I've got another one. And now this one sticks up. Pick up one more. And we just keep doing this process of adding beads into a strip back and forth. And you can make your clasp all the longer by just doing more and more of these beads. I would say do about 20 if you want just sort of like a standard little clasp. But uh, if you want to do more than that, it just means that you'll get an extra few centimeters or an inch out of your bracelet piece. So just keep going like this back and forth from one bead to the next, to the next, to the next. And you end up making this two little beads wide strip of peyote. Let's keep going. How many beads have I added? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This will make ten. I'm going to stop at sixteen. It'll be a little bit short, but it'll be easier for you to see. Seventeen. Oh, whoops, where am I up to? That's eleven, I think. Now number twelve. Doesn't matter if it looks a little wonky, it'll straighten up a bit later. Thirteen. Try and keep your tension firm, it helps. There we go. 13. Looks good. 14. Sorry, I have to keep going out of shot. My thread's just a bit short. Two more. 15. And 16. So pull that firm. I think this is 16 beads. I should just count them first. One. Two, three, four, five, six, whoops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen little beads that we've created like that. And now what I'm gonna do essentially is create a little loop that will loop around, and I'm gonna attach this end over to here. But first, this is the part you don't want to forget you need to thread through this little loop piece. So we'll go through here, take our thread through there. That will hopefully pull this little thread inside there. See how that nicely pulls that in? Like that, so that it's inside there now. See that? 
just chilling on the inside. Don't worry if it's a little loose for now. Again, the longer you make this strip, the easier this process is, but I didn't want to run out of thread, so I thought, you know, I'm gonna just hope for the best and go for a slightly shorter piece. And now you can see, essentially what I'm gonna do is create, continue in that same Pyote fashion and join to just over here. So you can see this one is sticking upwards and it's ready to join to the next sort of up bead, which would be one of these little Pyote beads just here. So if you have a look just here, I'll zoom in nice and close. See how I am attached here, just there. I'm gonna attach this end to the next bead around. So see that? This one here sticks out from here. So this one I'm gonna join so that it sticks out onto this one. So because I'm coming out of this side, I wanna make sure I stay on this side and go through that little bead. And then once I've gone through this bead, I don't wanna go through any other beads, just this one here doesn't matter if it's come out because my thread goes through I can make sure it goes back in in a second before I pull it all the way but like I said if you keep your thread that little bit longer it definitely makes life easier so I'll pull my little piece back inside there there we go and now as I pull it there we go that will sit nicely on there and now what I'll do is continue the peyote as though I've added another bead and I'm gonna go back into this endmost bead of my strip. Pull it all the way through. Try not to let your thread get caught around the end of your bar, like mine is trying to do. And now as we pull this, it will bring itself together on this little end. And this is where now I can secure that in by attaching to my next little bead along. So I'll go into this one along here. So if we have a look, I'm coming out of this one here, I've gone into here. So if it were Pyote, if we have a little look just there, you can see I'm coming out of here. So I would skip these pair and go into this one. And you'll see that's going to be the perfect little spot. If I can just get my bead, my needle through there, there we go. And now once I pull tight, doesn't matter if it's a little bit loose up to this point. As I pull tight, you can see, see all those threads? They're about to just disappear. See that? Look at that. You've kind of just got to have the confidence to go for it. Just keep going um, to try and make it so that you can see. So there we go. You can see that there. I've got that attached. I'm going to lock it in place by just weaving in some peyote again. You can go back into those beads, of course, if you want to, to try and lock them in a little further, which I do recommend uh, if you want to spend a bit of time doing that. So go through this bead here. Can be a little bit tight. If you've got a really firm tension on your peyote, it can be a little firm, but we'll get there. So I'll go through this one as well. And I'm gonna try and secure it for you guys to see. And now I can just weave from this bead directly into the one beside, which is this little fella, which is at the base of our strip. Into that, don't worry, all of this is covered with loads of diagrams. Plus I've actually got a video, I think, on how to make the beaded clasp. If you wanna check that out, there's, actually we put it into our Facebook group just the other day. Uh, Jermaine did it as our, we do this on a, on a Thursday, we do what we call as a what we call a throwback Thursday, uh, where we show off um, some of our old video tutorials. And there's one where I've got a really nice little beaded clasp. Uh, that's our most recent throwback Thursday. Which actually, I should show you how you can access all of that stuff um, on the group. Maybe I'll have to do that next time. I don't think I've got it set up for today. Uh, so anyway, I'll just go through this last little one again. So you can see, I just sort of went through those beads to get it secure once more. And yeah, let's just go through them both, eh? Pull it through. There we are. And I can just secure this little piece off. Take it through. Just weave around in a circle. Come on now. 
This is always how it comes, that the very last little bit of thread that you need to get rid of is always the bit that just does not want to behave. And every time you keep trying to move it, it just doesn't want to... There we go, got it. So into there, and we'll just sort of weave around into our peyote. It's the good thing about peyote stitch, you don't actually have to tie any knots. You can go in circles. I'll try and hold it nice in place so you can see. Get it away from the clasp so it's a bit easier to work with. Through there, back into here. There we go. And now I'm happy to just pass through a few beads and then I can just cut that off. That will do. And then you'll see that's going to give us the other side, the one side, of our clasp. So you can see I did this with a very small loop, which keeps it nice and neat, but I think it's better if it's a little bit longer in terms of getting the actual toggle piece on. And then essentially we're going to just add the loop, which I'm not going to do it on the video, you'll get the idea. Uh, essentially we're going to just add the loop on this side, and then that's when you would do exactly the same with this little other side of your toggle piece, which is this one just here, and then you can just add that as a loop onto this little piece just there. So that will essentially create for you, if I show you in blue, here's the finished blue one, uh, which has its toggle, and it has its loop. So you can see, you can increase the size of these strips to give you a little bit of extra length when you go to wear it, uh, but you can see it makes a fairly lengthy bracelet. Uh, and then when you've got it on, you can just see how we had that little bit of extra length there. So I'll show you the difference between the two. See how this one, it's shorter but neater, but this one's a little bit longer. It gives you extra wiggle room to get it inside of that little loop. So I'll pop that inside my clasp and it's much easier to do. And then ta-da! Dun, 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 dun. Ignore my hairy arms. And there you go. And the great thing about these little toggle clasps, which, uh, like I said, you can go check out the video. Maybe I'll stick it in the comments later. Uh, you can check out the video on how to make this little toggle piece. Uh, if you do this, it's exactly the same color as the seed beads all through your work. If you've got like anyone who has metal allergies or if you make to sell, again, uh, it can be quite cost effective in terms of getting that little piece. Um, but there you go. It's, there we go, and you can see it looks beautiful. Doesn't that look nice? How do we like it? Beautiful, right? I agree. Uh, so there you go. Monica says, wow, very pretty. Uh, where is it? There we go, wow, very pretty. Uh, and then you can see, so it looks like it's got a right angle weave in the center, but actually it's anything but. It's not a right angle weave, it's just a bead that joins these two, a bead that joins these two, a bead that joins these two, and a seed bead that joins those two. So it's a really nice little design that we've got there, and then you've got this beautiful finished bracelet. So like I said, we've got three different colorways. Well, I should check the website for that. I'll have a look on there in a second, actually. I'll show you um, on, our, on our thing. I'll hold them up for you, and I'll tell you their names. So because it's based on, uh, inspired by the Alhambra uh, in Andalusia in southern Spain, this one is our Palace Gardens. This one here is Enchant... No, this one is Hidden Treasure, uh, which kind of reminds me of Aladdin, really, if I say so myself. Uh, and then this one here is called Enchanted Night, which is absolutely beautiful. I think we've sold the most of this one, but luckily we have the most stock of this one. So I'll check out uh, in just a second to see what we've actually got left in stock for you guys. Uh, but yeah, comment. Which one do you like better? The, uh, the Hidden Treasure the Palace Gardens, or the Enchanted Night. Tell me which one is your favorite colorway. Uh, comment down and let me know. Right, now, uh, which Jackie already has, she says, uh, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, too many comments just came in. Where did they go? I love them all, says Jackie. It's got loads of comments come in. Uh, there we go. 
So let me just show you on the website. Let's see if any of them are actually out of stock already. Uh, just hopefully not. Uh, so let's just pop that over here. So there we go. We have our Alumbra. As always, this is what the Bead Spider website looks like today. So if you want to go and get the kit, you can see where it says that purple button that says view all related click kits. Otherwise, check out the little link in the description of this video. If you're on YouTube, the description is down below. If you're on Facebook or on our Facebook group, because I know this video should be playing on our Facebook group too, uh, you can watch, you can see the comments up above. So whichever one is easier for you, um, or you can come to the website, which is www.beadspider.co.uk. If you want to watch the video, you just click the picture. So if you missed last week's Ophelia, uh, no, I've missed one of the videos out, actually. I've just realized, whoops, I'll have to put that back in. If you missed last week, which I'll go and find it for you. Um, here we go. There's the video. You can just click on the big picture. If you hit play, there I'll be. There we are. Look, there we are. This is us live watching right now. Uh, so anyway, if you want to find the products or get the kits, you can do it from the big square there where it says a lumber bracelet related products. Click on that. Uh, and you can see we've got, yes, we still have all three colors in stock. I dare say that's not going to last long after the show. So if you're going to go and get them, jump on and get it. Uh, otherwise, get all three if you want to. Uh, that's the nice, easy way. You just click one button and then you get all three uh, right there in your basket. So that is the one. I'll just go back and I'll show you the last week's video. Uh, where are we? No, it's this one here. Whoops, close that. Uh, yeah, so if you're over here on this page, you can check out all of our candy beads, which we have just here. You can just click on this big button just here, and that will take you to the page where they are. Or check out all of our Preciosa size 10 seed beads by clicking that one. And then, like I said, this one is where you can find the kits. Uh, otherwise, if you want to see our entire video tutorial library, it's this button up here in the top right. Otherwise, you can go into the menu, see at the top up there where it says kits and tutorials. You can click on that and say video tutorials on the left. So see how we've got kits, then we've got classes, then we've got learning tools, we've got patterns, and then underneath that we have our video tutorials. That will take you to this page here. Here's the Alumbra. Uh, last week's one, which if you want to still get that one, I'll show you what it looks like. If you go onto that one, if you miss the tutorial, you can watch that as you see fit. You just got to click on that little red play button there. Otherwise, if you want to get the kit, just click this little button down here, view all related products. It'll take you to the page uh, where you can get all three of them for 15% off and you get our, our bonus pattern pack completely free. So 10 extra patterns. There's the Black Magic, there's the Mystic Emerald, and there's the Twilight Zone. The sale for this one is coming off uh, on Sunday night. So if you're going to get all three, you will get 15% off, but you've only got till Sunday night and you'll get that bonus pattern pack. All those extra products are down here as well, seed beads and whatnot. Loads and loads of things. I'm going to sort out that front page so that you can get back to this easily. Uh, but otherwise, if you want to see all the different things from the different shows we've done, you know how I showed you kits, classes, learning tools, patterns, then we've got video tutorials, and the one below it is video tutorial related products. Click on that one there, and there you go. You can see, what did we do on August 27th? There it is. You can see all of those products. What did we do on the 20th? We did our elegance. Click on that one. And then, hey, there you go. You can see there's the Elegance Kit. Uh, if you want to check out the Santa Pay, you can see that there. Same with our tutorial video page. There's loads and loads of videos that you can go and watch. Uh, our Pinwheel Earrings, that's another really popular video on YouTube. All sorts of different things um, are there and available. So yeah, go check that out. Um, that's going to be pretty much it for today. I'm going to go and fix this front page so that you can find the um, the ring and bracelet kit, which let me just show it to you once more, just because it's the last chance to get it on discount. So it's, oops, this one just here. Here's the kit. So we've got uh, this one here, which is the Black Magic. We've got the Mystic Emerald, I think it was called. 
And then I forget what we called the other one. It's gone. But anyway, there's the, the third colorway just there. And of course, uh, you also will make it makes bracelet and it makes ring and then you get the bonus patterns as well but yeah that's essentially um all of that everything for today so go on subscribe to our channel share these videos uh, uh, of course um make sure you head on over to our facebook page and like it or maybe head over to our youtube channel and subscribe i think we've got almost twenty-eight thousand now or is it almost 27? I can't remember. But anyway, lots and lots of people have signed up to our YouTube channel, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Um, the kit is there and available, of course. Uh, but yeah, lots of people are still here. They're all saying goodbye, which is lovely. So let's see. Um, Wayne says, clever design. Good job, Matt. I'm glad you liked it, Wayne. Um, Nancy, is it? She said, I'm off to do some cleaning. Stay safe, she says. Oh, cleaning. Dear, oh dear. My least favorite pastime. Uh, Heather says, wonderful tutorial, Matt. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Heather. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Kay has also said, uh, thank you, Matt and Jermaine. Great tutorial. Um, let's see. Have a lovely weekend, she says as well. Tracy says, thank you. Very nice bracelet. I'm glad you like it, Tracy. Um, Purple Penny's still here. We've still got Jan. Um, Monica, she says, thank you for your tutorial, Matthew. Thanks for watching, Monica. And staying up late again in Borneo, she is. Uh, Stacy says, bye. Um, Jermaine says, thank you, everyone. See you next time. Uh, which, yeah, me too, I guess. Um, Rhonda, she says, thanks for another wonderful tutorial. I'm glad you could manage to comment in there, Rhonda. So lovely to see you as well. So thank you for joining us. Uh, and Jackie also says thank you as well. So that's very, very nice. Um, but yeah, so now that we're all done and dusted, comment in the sorts of things you like to see in the future. Do you want to see bracelets? Do you want to see necklaces? Do you want to see pendant designs? Comment them in. Tell me what you want to see. Uh, we're always paying attention to what people want to see, what they want to learn. Um, comment them in, tell us. I know uh, a lot of people wanted to see some looming, so that's definitely on the agenda for sometime soon in the future. We're just waiting on the stock of looms to arrive, uh, but then once they've all come in, we're going to probably have a tutorial on bead looming. Uh, so yeah, just comment in everyone. Tell us the things you want to see. Tell us what you want to uh, what you want to learn, the sorts of beads that you'd like to use. You know, we'll see what we can do. Um, but yeah, Thank you everybody for watching. I uh, hope you had lots of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I certainly did. Right now, uh, so it's only 4.30, so I guess I gotta go and make sure we've got everybody's orders packed up, ready to go, uh, so we can get them all done and dusted. Uh, but yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Still lots and lots of people here watching, which is lovely. Uh, I see we had lots and lots of people. Um, so thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you had lots of fun and I will see you all next time. So thank you very, very much for watching. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you again same time next Friday. Bye-bye.